welcome to worship. We thank God for allowing us to be here in this place at this point in time once again. Uh, we thank God for his continual blessings and watching over us all week long. We want to also welcome those who are uh, watching by way of television and devices. Uh, we want to welcome you into the worship experience today as you would look on and share in what God is doing on this day. I trust that you'll be blessed as the word goes forth. Amen. As well as do the praying, praying and singing. Our scripture reference for this morning comes to us from Genesis chapter 41, verse 50 through 52. There we find these words, and to Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, whom Aseneth, the daughter of Potiphar, Potiphar, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. May God bless now the hearing and reading of his word. Amen. Me now, my Savior, I come to, to thee. Father of the book, we come once again, Lord Jesus, on this Sunday to worship you, to magnify your name, Lord. Lord, we want to come thank you for another day, Lord, keeping us all week, Lord, and we want to continue to pray for our, Lord, the world, Lord. Lord, just touch our church home, Lord, our church members, Lord. Those at home that can't get out and get about, that want to be in the church house, we thank them for being able to sit at home and watch it, Lord Jesus. And Lord, just touch our church, our past, and everyone that dwells in the church, Lord. And we ask all this in your loving Son, Jesus Christ, name. Amen. 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 I, I need thee, oh, bless me now. Amen. Amen. Let us receive now our tithes and an offering. Amen. Uh, you may place them in the basket, amen, at this time. And uh, those of you who are remote, amen, uh, you too may participate in this time of giving. And uh, you can utilize one of the uh, devices, one of the uh, buttons on the web page to share in giving amen uh, you can go to faithcbc.org listed there on your screen and you may also even place your ties in the mail and we will receive them there amen god bless you today lord we thank you now for the gift of giving we thank you for blessing us uh, above measure supplying every one of our needs and we just want to take a moment now give back unto you out of the abundance of blessings you've shared with us 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Cast me not, O gentle Savior. sunshine that you provide. Lord, even as you would cause your sun to shine on the just and the unjust, even as you would allow us to enjoy the refreshing uh, fragrance of your beauty in our lives, Lord, we want to thank you for all that you are and all that you're doing in our lives, Lord, not by accident or by coincidence that we are here today. Uh, but Lord, it's because of your hand of mercy that rests upon us, that has allowed us to be able to share in this day. And so Lord, we just want to come to you right now, and as we thank you and bless your name for all that you have already done. Lord, we want to lift one another up in prayer. We want to pray, Lord, for each and every individual under the sound of my voice. Lord, you know our needs and you know what we are facing in life, what concerns we have to deal with from one day to the next. And so, Lord, we just want to present our lives before you and lay them at your feet. And Lord, we just want to come yielded and still. And we just seek, Lord, your will for our lives, Lord, that you would continue to direct our steps, Lord, and lead us in the path of everlasting life. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for what you're about to do in this place. Lord, as we stand waiting and ready to hear from you once and again, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, as we would move forward in life, Lord, that you would allow us to forget, Lord, that which have uh, brought pain in our lives, Lord, and that you would allow us to be fruitful in our tomorrows. Lord, bless us now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would heal the sick. Lord, that you would bless, Lord, and that you would protect, that you would continue, Lord, to be there by our side, Lord, whether it's in the hospital or convalescent home or those who are in their own beds, Lord, in their own homes and residences, Lord, wherever, Lord, life finds us today, Lord, we pray that you would just lay your hands upon us, Lord, and give us what it is that we stand in need of, Lord. We pray that you would bless us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ yes, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you thank for what you're you. about to do. Good. Lord, in Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 What God has for me, it is for me. That's right, point to yourself. What God has for me, it is for me
chapter 41, verse 50 through 52. You might want to leave your text, your Bible open, amen, as we would refer not only to these two verses, but we'll look at some of the preceding and some of the following verses as well. As we would look at what uh, God was doing in the life of Joseph, uh, as he would utilize his life as a personal example and demonstration of how uh, we can take the lemons and make lemonade. Can I get a lemonade? Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, Jim Sabala shared this in his book entitled Fresh Faith. Uh, he said that one of the subtle ways uh, Satan hinders us today is by playing unpleasant tape recordings in our minds over and over again. Mm. Uh, people would sometimes lie in bed at night watching old videos on the inner screen of their hearts. They ride even in cars looking out the window, but seeing nothing. Mm -hmm. Instead, they daydream about the time someone hurt them, mm -hmm. took advantage of them, and made them even to suffer. Hurtful words said by others are heard over and over again. Horrible, ugly scenes are repeated hour after hour, day after day, and even year after year. Uh, that could have been Joseph's story, uh, but God would lead him out of his devastation and into his tomorrow. Watch this. Joseph's naming of his two children later on in life are a testimony of what God would do in his life and how God would lead him and transform him into the person that God wanted him to be. Uh, God produced transformation in his life and God would do the same in yours and mine as well. Amen. God would step into our lives and uh, begin a work on us. God may start working in our lives at, at an early age. He might be setting the stage early on. Uh, but it might be years later before we would ultimately walk in the promises that God has set before us. Mm. We might have to have some stumbles along the way, some pitfalls mm. placed in our way, some hurdles 
that we will have to jump, some mountains that we may even have to climb. Um, but my brothers and sisters, uh, nonetheless, God's purpose and his plans are clear. My brothers and sisters, as we would look at the early days of Joseph's life, as he would go about uh, declaring the dream that God had given him and placed in his life, um, it would cause uh, his brothers to become envious and downright jealous. Uh, it would cause them to become mean and even hateful towards him. As we would look back over the pages of Joseph's story, as you look at his life and see, uh, you would discover that Joseph had been wronged in his life. Mm. It's no secret uh, that he had been done dirty. Right. <laughs> uh, they threw him in a ditch. Not his enemies. Yes, not uh, uh, those who were on the other side of the fence, but those out of his own household, his, his own brethren, uh, would uh, throw him in a ditch. Hmm. Uh, but that was only the start of uh, the struggles that Joseph would face along the way in life. He would go on to be falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, which would then lead him to being incarcerated for a rape that he did not commit. Mm. Yes, uh, all because he had the courage to say no uh, and to flee a bad situation. Mm. My brothers and sisters, what we learn from the life of Joseph uh, is the fact that life is a combination of both good days as well as bad days. I, I know that we would uh, dream or hope uh, that we would suspect or prefer uh, that uh, having come in contact with Christ, uh, having been born again and uh, become a child of the King, uh, that all of our days would consist of smooth sailing and uh, that we would soar through life uh, on cloud nine. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is that life is a combination of both good days and bad days. Amen. Uh, we would experience success as well as failures, uh, triumphs as well as tragedies, joy as well as pain. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, sometimes the uh, Yes, it's because of our faith, it's because of our walk, our relationship with God, uh, that Satan would try to trip us, try to trap us, try to destroy us. Mm. Yes, after all, those who uh, have not yet believed, those who uh, have not begun to follow God, uh, already doing what Satan would have them to do or, or even not doing, uh, yes, what God would have them to do. Yes, uh, and so he has little concern for those who would find themselves uh, turning when he says turn, going down when he says go down and giving this way and that way uh, at his provocation in life. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, those who would choose the Lord, yes, those are the ones who he wants to derail uh, their lives. It's those individuals who 
would stand boldly to declare and proclaim uh, the coming of the Lord. Uh, it, it's those individuals uh, like John the Baptist who would declare that we ought to make ourselves ready for the coming kingdom of Christ that, that, uh, that, that, that would cause him to find his head on the chopping block. Yeah. Mm. Uh, my brothers and sisters, he, Joseph had been wrong in his life. Um, and it would rightfully give him a reason to be angry. I mean, after all that he had experienced in his life, uh, um, none of us would be mad at him if he had a chip on his shoulder. Um, none of us would uh, see um, uh, that uh, he would be mad at his brothers. After all, it was they who threw him in the ditch. Yes, uh, I mean, he was damaged because of a dream. Uh, it was a dream that he had that uh, would ultimately get him in trouble, not only with his brothers, but, but daddy who favoritized him also looked at him a little sideways. Uh, Yes, when, when he would suggest that even his daddy and mother, yes, would come unto him. Yes, they would uh, uh, question the validity of his dream. Um, Otis G. Pratt was a man who was bitter over treatment that he had received as an artist and sculptor. Uh, so he would decide that he would have his resentment carved into his tombstone. I mean, he had become so bitter in his life that uh, he would choose uh, to create a memorial not of his successes in life, uh, but of his bitterness. Mm. So the stone standing over the grave of Pratt and his mother over in Greenwood Cemetery. It would attract many tourists. Um, and so Pratt would die at the age of 76. And this is what would read over uh, his tomb. Mm. Stranger, I lived in an age when law and respect clung to the rich and shun the poor. When money and passion had the brains and talent went over the water for want of free school of art supported by our government. Mm. You can hear the bitterness uh, all in his voice as you would read his inscription. He said, such were the conditions which caused my landscape to decay with me as nature shows it. And he would simply sign off by saying, farewell. Somehow for Pratt, he found comfort in the long-term reminder to the community of the wrong that he had suffered. Um, thanks be unto God that we have a different example in Joseph. Joseph would create for himself a memorial that would be an attribute to the grace of God in his life rather than the bitterness that he would receive along the way. We have a choice in life. We can either become better or we can become better. Mm -hmm. The worst damage that we can receive in life can be turned to good. If we would choose to receive the spiritual transformation 
that God can place in our lives. Mm. Uh, because Joseph would uh, choose uh, to embrace what God had in store for him, Joseph placed himself in a position to ensure that his tomorrow would be better than his yesterday. Mm. I mean, he started with the love of an earthly father. He started with a coat of many colors uh, that would rival the envy of his brothers. Mm. I mean, look at how he started. Genesis chapter 37, verse 3 talks about how Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a tunic of many colors. Uh, the protection uh, that he received from his brothers in the midst of his disappointments is a tribute to what God had in store for him. And I want you to catch this because sometimes we are too busy singing another somebody done somebody wrong song that we can't see the grace of God that is on full display in our lives because we are too busy feeling sorry for ourselves mm. uh, that even while those who are trying to hate on us, trying to trip us and trap us along the way, God is still there with us, whether we can see him or not. He's still there. Watch this. Watch the protection of his brothers along the way while he was going through his times of tribulation. 37, 22 of Genesis reads like this, and Reuben said to his other brothers, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. Reuben would be working on Joseph's behalf. Yes, behind the backs of his other brethren, uh, Reuben would be working to ensure uh, the good fortune and safety of Joseph. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, while it is that we are facing hard times and difficult days and struggles in our lives, I want you to know that at the same time, God has placed a Reuben in our way. Yes, God has given us, yes, uh, uh, that brother, that sister, that individual, in our lives who is protecting us, who is guarding us when others are trying to bury us. Mm. All because God wants us to understand that our tomorrow can be better than our today. Mm. Look, not only did he have uh, Reuben working on his behalf, but there was also Judah. You just move down a few verses in that 26th and 27th verse of that same 37th chapter. Now we find this. Judah said to his brothers, what profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let us not, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened 
God has put a Reuben and a Judah in our lives. Uh, yeah. When it looks like uh, we're about to be slaughtered, yes, when it looks like it's all over, it's a wrap. Yeah. Yes, God will stand up a Reuben. God will stand up a Judah. Yes, uh, that would be a hedge, that would be a fence all around us. Uh, we used to sing it like this. Uh, yes, God has angels all around us like a fence. Mm. Yes, uh, won't he be a fence? Oh, each and every day in our lives. Yes, my brothers and sisters, uh, God uh, is still blessing us even when it seems as if uh, we're in it by ourselves. Uh, when it seems as if there's nobody who is concerned about us. When it seems as if, yes, uh, uh, we're, we're just lonely and lost and hopeless and helpless. Uh, yes, uh, I, I want you to know, yes, that God is still working it out. Uh, while Judah uh, would suggest uh, that they would sell him to the Ishmaelites, uh, yes, that sounds a whole lot like slavery to me. Mm. Yes, uh, when you would sell an individual to somebody else to be their servant, that sounds a lot like slavery. None of us would get excited about slavery in our lives, uh, but even uh, in, in him being sold to the Israelite, God was at work in his lives. Uh, yes, my brothers and sisters, it's not always what it looks like. Mm. Yes, uh, it, it looks like trouble in his way. Uh, looks like he's got to cry sometimes. Uh, looks like, uh, yes, uh, he has to stay awake at night. Uh, yes, uh, but my brothers and sisters, uh, life is not always based on the obvious. God has a plan. God has a purpose. Uh, yes, God is moving in his direction. God has favor on his life. Uh, but even that was not his best prize in life. Yes, uh, his best prize was what his heavenly father had for him. You just turn over a few chapters, a couple of chapters to verse, chapter 39, verse 2. Uh, it says this, the Lord was with Joseph mm -hmm. and he was a successful man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Yes, even in the midst of his pain, even in the midst of his tragedy, God never left Joseph by himself. God was right there with him. God would promise us and he would share with us this truth. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, God is there with us. Uh, Jesus would share the same truth uh, as he would commission us uh, to go out and share the gospel. And he leaves us with this. He says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Yes, uh, God is constantly trying to remind us uh, that he will be with us. No matter where we are in life, no matter what it is that we would face along the way, God will be with us. Ah, in that 39th chapter, verse 21, says this, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Yes, uh, my brothers and as Joseph find himself 
going from one devastation to the next devastation to the one bad situation to the next bad set of circumstances. God was there in the midst of it all just placing favor over his life. Yes. I mean, so much and so that even the keeper of the prison would show favor unto Joseph. I mean, Joseph was one of those individuals that we would describe as an individual who would always land on their feet. I mean, have you seen some individuals like that in life sometimes? Uh, that, that they go through uh, this set of circumstances and they land on their feet. They go through bankruptcy and they wind up rebuilding uh, all over again. Yes, Joseph was one of those individuals that no matter how many times he would get knocked down, uh, yes, God would always stand him back up on his feet. Um, God would not only be right by his side, but God would place within the life of Joseph a gift. God gave him a gift of management. Yes, uh, and, and God would ultimately use uh, the gift of management in the life of Joseph for what was to come. A famine was over the horizon. Yes, uh, and, and, and my brothers and sisters, God was preparing him. He would start him out as being a manager over Potiphar's house. Yes. You just read verses 3 through 6 of that 39th chapter of Genesis. Uh, Yes, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in the sight, in his sight, and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house. And all that he had, he put under his authority. So it was from that, from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he did not know that he had except for the bread which he ate. Look. I know Satan is not very bright. I mean, that's evident by the fact that he would suggest that he would make his throne above God's throne. Uh, it's evident by the fact that he uh, is a fallen angel kicked out of heaven. Yes, uh, uh, he keeps trying the same stunts over and over again. Yes, he would try it in the garden with Eve. Yes, he would even uh, try it with Job. He would try uh, with Christ in the garden after having fasted, uh, on the mountaintop after having fasted. Uh, he would try the same uh, mode of operation over and over not very bright. Yes. Uh, uh, but my brothers and sisters, it would do well. Yes. Uh, uh, that uh, we would figure out what Satan has lost sight of. And that is that when God would choose to bless an individual, we do better to have them on our side than rather have them against us. Watch what I'm saying. His master saw that the Lord was with him. Yeah. And that the Lord had made all he did prosper in his hand. 
So what, what, so what he decided was, I want Joseph to be over my stuff. Yes, because everything that he touches turned to gold. Yes, and so I want him to manage what I have. Yes, because he tends to do well with whatever he's over. Um, Satan has learned that lesson now. Uh, yes, uh, he would choose the opposite approach. Everyone, yes, whom God blesses, uh, Satan tries to trip, to trap, and to knock down. Uh, yes, he hasn't figured it out. Uh, yes, and so he keeps on trying. Uh, but nevertheless, my brothers and sisters, uh, I, I want you to understand uh, that as Satan would try to hurt us, as Satan would try to knock us down, as Satan would try to trip us up, yes, uh, it's only working out for our good. Listen, yes, uh, 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 they, they meant it for evil when they took Jesus to Calvary's cross. Um, but they did not get a full understanding of what he was, uh, what all was wrapped up in his saying when he said, if I if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto myself. Yes, it was through him going to Calvary's cross, being stretched out on Calvary's cross, lifted up from the earth uh, on Calvary's cross. Uh, yes, dying on Calvary's cross. Uh, yes, being buried in that burial tomb. Uh, yes, getting out with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. Uh, yeah, that would give you and I a right to the tree of life. Uh, that would allow us to be, yes, grafted in. Uh, yes, my brothers and sisters, that would allow us to be adopted into the family of God, would allow us to be heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Amen. He said, I, if I be lifted up, from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Yeah, they thought that it would be the end of their enemy by taking Jesus to the cross and nailing him there. Yeah, they thought that their problems would be over. Yes, uh, once they get rid of Jesus, but what they didn't understand is that no man could take his life. He gave it freely. Uh, he had a purpose and a plan. Uh, yes, uh, he had some plans after the cross. Uh, Sunday morning was coming. He had plans after the cross on Friday. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, that he would get up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Yes. And so he would rob uh, the grave of his victory. He would take away the sting uh, from death. So no longer would we have to be fearful. Yes, uh, of dying. No longer would we have to be fearful of the grave. Uh, yes, because just as he got up, so it is that everyone who believes in his name would be able also to rise up from the dead. Yes, Jesus. Yes, he got up. Uh, he's, he's showing us here, yes, in, in, in Joseph, that it would be a wise decision, yes, uh, that, that, that we would uh, see where God is headed, yes, uh, and jump on the bus, uh, jump on the bandwagon, ride the wave uh, in the direction where God is going. Yes. yes. Uh, so, and so he would place Joseph he would place him over his house as overseer. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, uh, I, I got cut across the field. Uh, he would he would manage uh, uh, his house. He would manage uh, even the prison. Yes. Uh, um, uh, look look at twenty two and twenty three real quick. Yes, we're trying to run, race our way through here. Yes, uh, and, and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph had all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. Uh -huh. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority. 
because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Yes, it's a continual theme. Yes, I mean, don't you hear it yes. echoing back over and over again? The Lord was with him. Yes, can, can you hear that resounding thing come back again and again? And the Lord made uh, what he did prosper. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, when we would place our hands in the hands of the master, uh, tomorrow can be better. Uh, ultimately, he would find himself uh, at Pharaoh's doorstep. Those dreams that he would interpret and how God would bless him, yes, uh, over the years, uh, uh, would land him in Pharaoh's house. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, you see there in that 39th verse of that 41st chapter. Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And it would be Joseph uh, who would prepare the cities for the coming famine. Um, some were large structures with numerous rooms, such as Hezekiah's storehouse in 2 Chronicles 32, 28. Are those that were probably used by Joseph? Other granaries were silos in the form of round or square pits in the ground. He would utilize them to prepare and to plan. Joseph was given the opportunity to take charge. from the individual who would sit at the seat of authority over the land mm -hmm. because they recognized that God had his hand on Joseph's life. My brothers and sisters, when we would seek in our lives to prosper, to grow, to develop, we all seek most of all to be where God would have us to be. We all seek most of all to be under God's authority in our lives. When we place our lives in God's hands, God in due time will exalt us. We don't have to try to promote ourselves. We don't have to try to step on nobody else to get ahead in life. We don't have to try to hurt or harm somebody else in order for us to get ahead in life. No. We just sung it earlier. It still rings in our ears what God has for you. It's for you. Yes. And my brothers and sisters, we can know without a doubt that God will surely bring us out. Yes. Uh, Joseph when he would go through what he went through. He could have been bitter, but he chose to be better. Yes, when even his brothers would find their way at Joseph's doorstep, looking for relief from the famine, 
it would be Joseph who would take the high road. It would be Joseph who would rather than in extract a revenge on his brothers, he would instead bring them in and allow them to be cared for and to be fed under his management. Why? Because his tomorrow was better, he refused to be better. So as a result, he leaves a memorial and a legacy for himself, unlike Pratt. Instead, he would focus on what God had done in his life to make his tomorrow better and leave that as his legacy. And so he would name his firstborn Manasseh. Because God would allow him to forget his pain on yesterday. God would relieve him of his bitterness, his spite. Yes, God would allow him, yes, uh, to think about the bright sunshine that shine that God had placed in him, how he had let his favor rest on his shoulders, and that's what he would leave as a legacy. Yes, for God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. So Manasseh is his name. Mm. And so he, he says, not only has he made me forget, but he also made me fruitful. And so I'm going to name my second son Ephraim. I want, I want you to know that I was able to forget the hurt and the pain because I ultimately rest in the arms of the Lord who is with me. But not only that, he has made my life fruitful. As I move forward, he turns my tragedy into triumph. He says, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And somebody ought to say today, Lord, help me to forget my past and remember my fruitfulness. God would have us to shake ourselves loose of what hurt us and embrace what multiplies in us. Amen. So I want to give this invitation to you right where you are. My brothers and sisters, God is saying, with outstretched arms, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. This is your time. This is your opportunity to receive what God has in store for you. So the doors of the church are open as we pray. Lord, we thank you now in Jesus' name for your Son and our Savior. We thank you, Lord, that you went to Calvary's cross. You drank of that bitter cup that we might be heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would bless every heart who is about to make a decision in their lives, who's even making decisions right now, that they would choose you this day. Lord, we pray that you would unshackle the burdens, Lord, and allow them to walk in the liberty that you've set before them. Lord, in Jesus' name, bless us now, set free, amen. Amen and amen, God be praised. Amen, we thank God for another Lord's day. We thank God that he has brought us into this appointed place at this appointed time to receive what he has in store for us, to remind us, amen, that our tomorrow can be better. Amen. Yeah, amen. Till we meet again yeah. in this place. Yeah. Let us pray one for another, lift one another up in prayer. Yeah. Only he has set me free. free.
Pray for your brother, your sister. Pray for the individual on your right, on your left. Those of you who are watching at home, just began to pray for somebody else. sister, Lord, our friend, our family, our neighbor. Lord, your blessings, Lord, we pray, would be upon them in the name of Jesus. Bless our going out and our coming in until we meet again. Lord, we pray that you'll continually let your angels be a fence all around us each and every day. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you fallen before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say in song. Amen. Amen.